The Phlebotomy Textbook, Chapter 7, Part 1, Venipuncture Equipment. We will start with this chapter since the first thing you need to learn is what the equipment is and how you will use it. Please see the PowerPoint for learning outcomes and key terms. Be sure to watch both parts of the video. This is a list of some equipment you may use when performing a venipuncture. When performing phlebotomy in the clinical laboratory specimen collection area, you will normally have a sort of end table that holds all of your supplies. When you must travel to an inpatient's room, you would take a collection tray which holds all of the supplies that you will need. We will primarily use the evacuated tube system which has a holder. The holder attaches to the needle and holds your tubes. Syringes are not used as often as the evacuated tube system, but there are situations where they are the best choice. A wing collection set or butterfly can be used with either an evacuated tube system or a syringe base on its design. The butterfly is used for smaller delicate veins. The needle comes in direct different gauges and types. Some are for syringes and some are for the evacuated tube system. A sharps container is a container for disposing of needles. An evacuated tube has a vacuum. A transfer device lets you transfer from a syringe to an evacuated tube. A tourniquet is used to help make the veins more visible. You must always wear gloves and they should be latex free. 70% isopropyl alcohol is the standard aseptic for routine venipuncture. Chlorhexidine is used for blood donors and blood cultures, but not for routine venipuncture. Venipuncture equipment continued. The 2x2 two two gauze is used to hold pressure on the venipuncture site. Bandages or wraps can be used to prevent bleeding after venipuncture. Antric microbial gel or a hand washing sink should be available to disinfect your hands between each patient. A pen that has ink that won't run if it gets wet, such as a ballpoint, is good for using on labels. Each organization will have a standardized way of organizing phlebotomy trays, which can be carried to the patient. Standardized stocking of the trays is usual in prevent supplies from outdating and ensuring you have what you need to collect samples when away from the lab. Trays should not be placed on the patient's bed or foot food tray. At the Mason campus, we organize the trays like the photo on the right. At the other campuses, different trays are used and will be organized differently. We stock the tubes we have in the order of draw and restock at the end of each class. In hospitals and emergency departments, many organizations are switching to mobile workstations, which is more convenient than a tray so that you don't have to find a place to set the tray down and you can put it in the room in a location that you can reach. There are many types of phlebotomy chairs. Blood donors usually have chairs that are reclined or can recline during a reaction. Outpatient chairs will usually have an arm that comes across the patient and can prevent the patient from coming out of the chair if they faint. The chair in the photo can also change heights so that the phlebotomists of different heights can be more comfortable and not harm their backs. Some places have chairs that are permanently elevated to reduce bending and back injuries to the phlebotomist. This image is a mobile donor collection chair. Most are easily adjustable so that the donor can recline and not pass out. All trays, workstations, and equipment must be well stocked and cleaned and disinfected regularly. The evacuated tube system is the most frequently used collection system. This system allows you to draw directly into an evacuated tube that has an additive that is required for a particular test. This system minimizes your exposure to blood, which is a biohazard. The needles used in the evacuated tube system has two needles. One goes into the holder and will puncture the tubes. This needle is covered in a shield, which allows you to change the tubes without spilling blood. 
The other needle is the one that goes into the patient's arm and has a safety shield to cover the needle when you have completed the venipuncture. The image on the left shows a needle when it is not in the holder. On the top of the image, you can see that the needle has two caps. One is clear and one is colored. The clear cap is the one you remove first, and then you place the needle into the holder in the small hole and twist it until it stops. Do not be aggressive when tightening. The colored cap covers the needle that will go into the patient's arm. This needle should not be opened until the patient's arm has been cleaned and the tourniquet is in the pl place. Remember, clear to clear. The needle under the clear cap goes into the clear holder. The purpose of the holder is to hold the evacuated tubes, prevent you from touching the needle, and hold the needle. The evacuated tubes collect the samples. There are multiple types of needles. A multi-sample needle is the type used in the evacuated tube system. You may collect many tubes using this needle. A hypodermic needle is the type that attaches to a syringe. A winged collection set, also known as a butterfly, can be used with either a syringe or the evacuated tube system, depending on the design. The needles vary in length from 1 to 1.5 inches and from 21 to 23 gauge for routine venipuncture. The needles are sterile, single use, and disposable. The length varies from 1 to 1.5 inches for routine venipuncture, and the needles on the butterfly are shorter at 0.5 to 0.75 inches. It is important to remember that the smaller the gauge, the larger the needle diameter. A 23 gauge is very small and a 16 gauge is large. A 23 gauge would be used on a small fragile vein and a 16 gauge would be used for blood donation. The color of the cap is standardized and tells you the gauge of the needle. The, cap, the green cap is a 21 gauge and a black cap is 22 gauge needle. Remember, you never use equipment if the manufacturer's seal is broken. It is now required that all needles have a safety device like the one in the middle of the image. Before removing the, brain, the green cap, the needle should be secured in the holder, the patient's arm should be prepared, a, a tourniquet on, and the safety device lifted out of the way. The parts of the needle include the bevel, which is the slant where the opening is, the shaft or the length of the needle. The lumen is the opening inside the needle where the blood flows. The hub is the part of the needle that attaches to the syringe or holder. The syringe needle or hypodermic needle can be used to collect the amount of blood that the syringe can hold. A multi-sample needle used in the evacuated tube system will be capable of collecting many evacuated tubes. Remember, there is a needle under the sleeve and you should avoid putting your finger into the holder. The multi-sample needle is used with the evacuated tube system. It has points at both ends, as I previously mentioned, one for venipuncture under the colored cap and one with a sleeve over it in, to puncture the stoppers of the needles. The Needle Stick Prevention and Safety Act requires engineering controls to protect patients and staff from needle sticks. Before using devices from different manufacturers, please familiarize yourself with how the device works before trying to use it on a patient. The act was passed in 2000 as an amendment to the Bloodborne Pathogen Standards of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. You can see the pink safety device on the evacuated tube system needle in the holder, its holder on the left. The needle on the right would have to be placed into a holder that has a safety device attached to the holder. Needle holders are made with a clear rigid plastic and are available with or without a safety feature. The needle may come pre-attached or separate. The tube advanced line shows you the point you should not advance the tube onto the holder before performing the venipuncture. If you push the tube into the needle before the venipuncture, the tube will lose vacuum and you must discard it. The flared flanges on the holder are used when changing the tubes. 
The holder should remain attached to the needle and be discarded in a sharps container after the safety device is activated. Always activate the device as soon as you remove the needle from the arm against a hard surface, then dispose of it immediately into a sharps container. Do not activate the safety device with your fingers or on a soft surface such as a bed. You will do this while maintaining pressure on the patient's collection site or while instructing them to hold pressure if they are capable. These are some examples of evacuated tube systems with safety devices. They, are, they look different because they're usually made by different manufacturers. This is an example of a holder with a safety feature that retracts the needle into the holder. All needles and holders must go into the sharps containers with the device activated. It does not make it safe for normal trash. Here are two additional types of holders with safety devices. The needle disposal system is called a sharps container. It is rigid, puncture resistant, labeled with biohazard, sealable, and lockable. Remember that you should never recap a used needle as you could be exposed to blood and a needle stick. Here's an example of some needle disposal containers, which are known as in healthcare as sharps containers. These will have the full line, which you should not fill beyond. If someone fills beyond the, the line, lock the container. Do not close the container until they reach the full line as they are designed to lock. If someone overfills the container, do not try to remove excess sharps. Do not place other supplies such as gauze, alcohol wipes, blue absorbent pads, or caps in these containers. Needles, lancets, or tubes with blood not being used for testing or when testing is complete should go in there. Never reach into a sharps container. Part two of chapter seven will discuss the collection tubes that are used in the evacuated tube system, understanding what is in the tubes and what they are used for and the order that they should be collected will be key to being a good phlebotomist and passing the certification exam. Please listen to part two next. This ends this lecture.